This sick puma was rescued from a zoo and is now a spoiled house cat. You might think you're a cat person, but Maria and Alexander Dmitriev are big cat people. We're talking big cat people. Rather than adopting your everyday tabby cat, Maria and Alexander are the proud caretakers of Messi, a puma who was born into captivity and rescued from death. But Messi isn't your average wild animal that will rip your head off the moment it sees you. Messi is the sweetest, cuddliest house cat you'll find. Messi was one of the three cougar cubs that were born at the Saransk Zoo in Penza, Russia. Messi and his brothers Suarez and Neymar were named after famous soccer players to pay tribute to Russia hosting four games at the World Cup. Unfortunately, Messi began having health problems when he was three months old. The Saransk Zoo did their best to take care of him, but they were okay with someone taking Messi off their hands. Messi's fate changed when Maria and Alexander visited the zoo and saw him when he was eight months old. According to Maria, Alexander always dreamed of owning a big house cat and finally their dreams might come true. The couple thought their big house cat would be a lynx. When they found out Messi was sick and the zoo might give him up, they immediately started negotiations to buy him and take the sick puma off their hands. Maria and Alexander were pleasantly surprised when the zoo agreed to let them have Messi. They knew it would be difficult, but the first thing they had to do was nurse the kitten back to health. Maria said that beyond the challenges of Messi being a wild animal, he was extremely weak and required constant attention for the first few months. Even once Messi returned to full health, he still only grew to about two-thirds the size of a normal puma. Now that Messi's healthy, Maria and Alexander have to deal with the challenges of raising a wild animal as a house cat. The couple tried a wild animal trainer to help them teach Messi commands, but no one agreed to work with them. The couple also lives in a one-bedroom apartment. Still, they've done their best to accommodate Messi. They turned their hallway into Messi's den and featuring stairs to climb and a real tree to scratch. Eventually, the couple was able to find a dog training school that allowed Messi to attend. The puma turned house cat can now respond to 10 different commands. Much like a dog, Messi also requires a lot of exercise. While in captivity, Messi hadn't been active at all. The couple had a special harness and coat made for Messi so they could take him on walks. Now, they can walk Messi twice a day for an hour each time. While Maria and Alexander insist that Messi is gentle and has the same temperament as a regular house cat, there have been some animal activists that disagree. Many of them have voiced their belief that Messi should be living in the wild, but the couple disagree since Messi has never had to survive alongside other animals. Other activists note that even though Messi is gentle, he still has animal instincts that could be dangerous. For now, Messi will remain with Maria and Alexander as the most spoiled house cat in Russia. Some of the animal rights activists who aren't a fan of Messi have questioned how Maria and Alexander can legally own him. Some countries have stricter laws against owning what are considered to be wild animals, but Russia's laws are quite limited. The only laws Russia has in place regarding wild animals are if you kill or injure one. So technically, the couple aren't breaking any laws. Mike Tyson's tiger wasn't breaking any laws either though. As the controversy around Messi continues to grow, so does his fan base. When Marie and Alexander brought Messi home, they created an Instagram and YouTube account for the Puma. As of May 2019, Messi's Instagram account has 944,000 followers and his YouTube channel boasts 345,000 subscribers. If you head over to his YouTube, you can see videos of Messi and Alexander working out together and even a video about how to properly give a Puma a bath. Even though Messi is more than two years old, he still has some serious health issues that have followed him through his childhood. In particular, Messi has had to deal with muscular atrophy and rickets that likely stem from when he was neglected as a cub. Messi also has to take specific minerals and vitamin supplements to keep his bones healthy. Still, he walks with a limp and has to visit the vet constantly. Even though Messi was originally named after an Argentinian soccer star, well, Lionel Messi, both Maria and Alexander couldn't care less about soccer. In an interview with Reuters, Alexander said the couple aren't soccer fans, but that has since changed. He said now that they have Messi, the couple will watch soccer together and cheer for the Argentina team simply because of our Messi. The global sport just gained two more fans thanks to this special Puma. Pet owners spend an average of $1,285 on their pets per year. Americans alone spend $70 billion on pets each year. Taking care of Messi also comes with a high price tag. He's fed twice a day and his diet consists of raw turkey, beef, and chicken. The couple says that it costs about 20 to 40,000 rubles every month to feed him. That equals about 300 to 600 dollars just for food, and that doesn't even include any of the pricey vet bills. Marie and Alexander have gone to great lengths to make sure Messi feels at home in their apartment. 
His favorite toys to play with are empty bottles and balls, and he frequently plays with a miniature soccer ball that was a gift from a Brazilian journalist. Along with his specially crafted climbing nook, Messi has a mirrored wall so he can keep himself entertained. Or he can just sit beside the mirrored wall looking pensive while reflection from Mulan plays in the background. It might sound crazy, but those dog training classes that Maria and Alexander enrolled Messi in have actually worked. He knows 10 commands and the list keeps growing. Messi's also perfectly fine walking in a harness and the couple says he rarely pulls. Not only is his training working, but Messi is a good friend to the other dogs in the class. All the neighborhood dogs have taken a liking to Messi and have no problems letting him learn with them. Not only is Messi on the way to being a well-trained puma in public, but Maria and Alexander have even managed to house train him. Messi does most of his business outside when they go on walks and short day trips. When the option for a walk isn't there, Messi has been trained to relieve himself in the bathtub. It's the same bathtub that Messi has been trained to calmly sit in when Maria and Alexander give him a bath. When Maria and Alexander brought Messi home, he was calm and wasn't super affectionate. Over the years though, Messi has slowly become more affectionate towards his human family and become more and more like a typical house cat. Messi loves to be stroked and especially loves getting scratched behind the ears. He has his own cat bed, but will often lay with Alexander in the couple's bed. Messi even learned not to have his claws out when jumping onto the bed. Maria and Alexander admit that having a large cat like Messi as a pet has put some limitations on their life. Right now, the only options for holidays are those within driving distance. That doesn't mean they can't find a hotel that will allow Messi to stay though. Alexander, who works at a printing house in town, also admits that he can no longer join his friends for a drink after work since he has to walk Messi. Those problems won't sound unfamiliar for anyone with a dog or kids though. While Messi's gentle and has never attacked a human, Maria and Alexander have found that there are some animals he just doesn't like. Messi's usually timid of any animals that are larger than him and make strange sounds. Maria and Alexander found that out the hard way when they took Messi to visit a farm with cows. Luckily, Messi won't actually harm the animals, he'll just stay on guard until they're gone. The other animals that Messi doesn't get along with is Maria and Alexander's other cat. The couple already had six-year-old sphinx cat named Kira before they got Messi. They introduced the two cats to each other, but when Messi tried to play with Kira, she hissed and tried to climb. Since Kira isn't the biggest fan of Messi, Maria and Alexander have made sure to keep the pair separated while in the apartment. One of the things Maria and Alexander love about Messi is he's as down to earth as they come. Maria said she thanks God he doesn't realize he's a star because stars usually have demands. Instead, Messi lives without any special treatment and doesn't get jealous when Maria and Alexander pay attention to Kira instead. Owning a puma is already pretty demanding, so Maria's happy he doesn't ask for royal shrimps for breakfast. You might think raising a puma and a sphinx cat would be enough for Maria and Alexander, but the couple have expressed a desire for more cats. They plan to move from their apartment and into a bigger house in the near future to give their cats more space. The pair also hope to adopt a leopard in the future as a companion for Messi. The couple will likely end up with more criticism if they adopt another large cat, but they don't seem too phased. All they care about is giving Messi the best life they can. Now that you've listened all about Messi, keep going to learn about the heartwarming story between a human and another wild animal. This is Ericus Plucus, a farmer in Lithuania. Living on a farm next to a forest, Ericus gets to experience the wonders of nature often. Like many countryside residents, he finds solace in the peace that comes with living away from urban areas. While he may be far from heavily populated cities and metropolitan areas, he has plenty of company. Ericus encounters both his farm animals and wild animals from the forest all the time. One day, Ericus arrived home to discover a baby moose lying near his farm's gate. Any animal expert knows that seeing a baby animal often means the mother's nearby and she could be a threat. Ericus looked around for the mother but she was nowhere to be found. It was then that he took a closer look at the helpless calf. He approached it slowly to not frighten it and upon inspection, he was able to deduce the backstory. As Ericus slowly neared the baby moose, he realized she must be no more than two weeks old. The first sight of her was heartbreaking, he said. Like any young animal would be, the calf was quite scared of Ericus at first sight. However, she was too weak to run away. Without her mother, the baby moose didn't have food or safety. Dirty and riddled with flies, the young animal was clearly in desperate need of help. As Ericus looked at this weak young moose, he began piecing together in his mind what could have possibly brought her to such a state. The clearest answer was that the mother of this young calf had been harmed. He deduced the baby moose must have watched her mother get taken out by hunters. The barely born animal would have instinctively run away in search of solitude. Whether she was too weak to go on or somehow knew the farm would be a safe place, something had brought her to Ericus's farm gate for a reason. 
Upon finding a wild animal, the first thing that comes to mind is contacting animal services. And that's exactly what Ericus did. While waiting for them to arrive, he took the necessary courses of action to keep the calf alive. He found as many green leaves as he could and offered them to the calf along with some milk. Time was of the essence since she was already in poor condition and animal services wouldn't be able to arrive until the next day. The young moose took well to the food Ericus offered. Confident she needed to eat right away in order to survive, Ericus was happy to see that she would likely make it to the morning after all. Since he already contacted animal services, the next step was to solicit advice. He contacted his friends but was surprised that they all seemed to have the same negative reaction. They encouraged him to let nature take care of it, Ericus said. Regardless of what anyone said, it was already on Ericus's heart to save the baby moose. A true nature-loving farmer, it wasn't in him to simply disregard a helpless creature, especially after bringing her to safety. The odds of this young calf surviving this far were slim and he wasn't going to give up on a miracle. Fortunately, he had a barn that could keep her safe from predators. However, he was met with further indifference the following day when animal services arrived. The calf's condition was better by the morning when animal services arrived, however they came with sad news. Since there wasn't a service that provided care for orphaned forest animals in Lithuania, they couldn't offer her help. Instead, they suggested that Ericus call local hunters and inquire if they could take the female moose off his hands. It became clear that the only way to keep her out of harm's way would be to raise her himself. Upon asking his friends for advice, many of them stressed their concern it may be illegal for Ericus to take the wild moose as his own. He brought this up with animal services and to his surprise, they assured him it would be okay for him to keep her. However, they also warned him that he would be completely responsible for her from then on. Even knowing he wouldn't receive any help from any others, Ericus agreed to take care of the calf. It was as though the young moose knew that Ericus was unlike any other humans, or at least sensed his willingness to help her. She was petrified of anything except for him. Physical healing was one thing, however, there was an emotional component that Ericus would have to work with too. Since she'd already been scared from an extremely young age, he would need to put in some effort to build her confidence again. Ericus named the calf Emma and committed to being there for her as long as she needed. This wasn't an easy task while she was young. She needed to be fed frequently and craved Ericus's presence constantly. As soon as he'd walk into the house, she would cry, so he began to sleep in the barn just to help Emma feel safe. All of his efforts were not lost on the young moose. She grew to trust Ericus above anything else. Ericus continued to meet every need of Emma's and so she began to trust him and his farm. At last, the baby moose could feel comfortable and safe in her new home. However, Ericus knew that she couldn't live on a farm forever. He wanted her to have a normal life and knew that meant gradually supporting her reintroduction into the wild. Emma was scared of everything outside her safe bubble, so getting her back on her own would be a challenge. With Ericus's love and support, Emma began growing larger. Ericus knew it was time to start taking her out of her comfort zone, and he did this by taking her on walks through the forest. He hoped that being in nature would help develop her natural instincts, and despite her traumatic experiences, Emma followed Ericus wherever he went. She was hesitant to go back into the forest at first, however, she trusted the man who raised her. Without a mother to teach her the ways of the wild, Emma was ill-equipped to take care of herself. Fortunately, Ericus knew a fair amount about nature and the forest. As she was nearly grown, it was imperative to teach Emma all he could before releasing her back into the wild. So, Ericus walked her to safe areas that had food. He did his best to communicate to her where she could and couldn't go so that one day she could do it on her own. Gradually, Emma became more and more comfortable with nature. In addition to going for walks, she and Ericus began swimming together in nearby lakes. Sunshine or snow, the pair could be seen spending time outdoors all the time. As she began to adapt to different outdoor settings, Emma grew increasingly confident and more trusting. When it came to humans, however, the only one she was okay with was Ericus. He said, to me, she's gentle and loving. Emma had grown so accustomed to Ericus that she even began watching her strength when she was around him. It was because of him that she was able to grow big and strong, but that also made her a danger. Ericus was no match to Emma now that she had all her strength and weighed hundreds of pounds. However, that was never a problem. She was always careful not to hurt the man who'd cared for her. Emma's gentleness towards Ericus was something he couldn't keep to himself. She was proof that moose were emotional creatures capable of caring for not only their own kind, but for a human. Emma was grown and nearly ready to take on life by herself, but Ericus couldn't risk Emma falling victim to the same fate that had taken her mother's life. He had to do something to ensure Emma's safety, at the very least for his own peace of mind. He decided to have a few hunters come over so they could see that Emma was more than a meal. 
Her intelligence was evidence that her ability to contain herself and avoid causing harm. Her love was also apparent in the way she was with Ericus. Sure enough, the hunters who came over vowed not to inflict harm on the sweet animal. Some of them decided that they would avoid hunting moose altogether, while others decided they were done hunting, period. Thanks to the love and help of her human friend, Emma was gaining confidence. She went from being afraid of the forest to following Ericus on walks through the forest each day. Eventually, she began wandering off all by herself. Like a parent, Ericus had to grow accustomed to her absence and trust she would return safely. He knew that the local hunters would stay clear of harming her and that she was strong, but it still worried him. Ericus's fear spiked the first night that Emma spent the night in the forest. He recalls that he barely even slept. The very place he taught Emma to trust was now a source of fear for Ericus. However, he knew that this was exactly what he'd hoped for and raised her to do. Sure enough, Emma returned after each one of her adventures. Safe, grown, and fully independent, she was beginning to live her life in her natural habitat.